asks her for is just putting those over that sweet little baby's head. Hi YouTube, so it is Elizabeth, also known as Nurse Zabe, here on YouTube and Instagram, back again with another video for you guys. I thought today we could make a video about 10 things that your labor and postpartum nurse wants you to know about your newborn. Now of course if you ever have any concerns, please do not hesitate to talk with your nurse or your pediatrician but these are just some normal things that you can expect because newborns are beautifully and wonderfully made to both be born, which in and of itself is kind of an intense experience for the baby, and then also to survive. And they have been crafted in such a way that they are able to do both of those things quite beautifully. So you might notice some molding on your baby's head. A lot of times they come out looking a little bit cone-headed and it's really normal and honestly, that's what hats are for, is just putting those over that sweet little baby's head. Now most babies are born in the head down position. This is also called vertex. And their heads sometimes still need to do a little bit of finagling to fit through the birth canal and to fit through the pelvis. This is achieved because babies bones of their skull are actually not connected yet. That doesn't happen until a few years down the road. You might have heard that babies have soft spots, two right on the top of their head and then one right back there and we'll notice that the molding resolves itself pretty quickly over a few days to a few weeks but a lot of times even just a few hours later you're like okay like you looked like an alien and I loved you then but you look more human and I still love you now. Other things that you might notice are some scalp swelling. This is called a caput. A lot of times this is just from coming through the birth canal. We'll have a little bit of swelling there. We also can have a cephalohematoma, which is basically like a bruise. And so it's gonna be a little bit more firm and it'll resolve in a couple of days to a couple of weeks, whereas the caput resolves in just a few days. Now some babies, especially babies that are not your first baby, shoot out like lightning. They come really, really quickly. And because of this, they might have some bruising. Sometimes bruising on their face can be really, really normal when babies shoot out of the birth canal. So with that little bit of bruising, we might see a little bit more frequency of jaundice. That's why sometimes you might notice your baby looks a little bit tan or a little bit yellow. I will insert some photos of my sweet baby girl who I was like, dang, she's tan. Look at the skin, I did not have a tan baby. What is jaundice? Jaundice is the excess of bilirubin, which is a waste product that typically the liver processes and is excreted through pee and poop. Well, babies, because one, they have immature livers, and two, sometimes they have a little bit more red blood cell turnover, particularly with bruising and cephalohematomas, sometimes they get a little bit of a buildup of that jaundice level. Jaundice can make babies very, very sleepy. It can reduce how often or how much they want to feed. And then this, in part, can also cause us to pee and poop less. So it's kind of compounding. Once you get jaundice, it's easy for it to get a little bit out of control. But the reason why we care is because jaundice levels get super, super high. It can cause connectoris or brain damage. I have a video all about jaundice. There are some other things that can cause jaundice, like it can have to do with mom's and baby's blood type not matching. Jaundice can be treated by phototherapy. Sometimes this will be in the form of a billy blanket, which I actually had to do with my first daughter, or an overhead bank of lights. And that helps break the bilirubin down into an excretable source. And often you will be instructed to help make sure that your baby is getting enough to eat. So by pumping additionally to putting the baby to the breast, and then perhaps if we're still lacking in nutrition in some way, adding a formula supplementation or a donated breast milk supplementation until your milk fully comes in to help baby clear the excess bilirubin. Something else that can be really normal when babies shoot very quickly out of the birth canal or when they're born by a cesarean birth is that babies can be really, really spitty. So this is due to that amniotic fluid kind of hanging out in their tummy. They didn't get that really nice, good, tight squeeze as they would have if they had been born in a more slow fashion through a vaginal birth, and that's okay. It's no fault of anybody's. It's just one of those things that happen. But that amniotic fluid is a little bit irritating on their GI system, so you're probably gonna notice that your baby is pooping a whole bunch, and oftentimes when they're trying to poop, they also end up spitting up. The spit up is often clear, but sometimes it can be a little bit tinged with old brown blood. Things that we really want you to let us know if you see is if baby spits up and it's lime green, or if they spit up and it's bright red bleeding. Those both can be indicators that something might not be right and we definitely wanna let your pediatrician know that. If you see any yellow spit up, that's actually typically just 
breast milk. But keep in mind that even if that breast milk just kind of goes in the GI system and then comes right back up, the wonderful healing properties of colostrum and the way that it's made just for your baby really do help soothe its GI tract. If you do have a baby who is spitting up, a lot of times they're able to really clear those secretions on their own. The best help that you can give them is just support. You just wanna kind of lean your baby forward, give them a pat on the back, help them clear those secretions. You also can put them over your shoulder and pat them on their back. If you notice that your baby is holding their breath or changing colors, definitely a time to call out for your nurse for some assistance. Also might use a bulb syringe. I don't have one with me, but I'll insert a little picture right above. And what you wanna make sure you do with the bulb syringe is decompress press it and then place it right on the inside of the baby's mouth and in their nose to help clear secretions. Sneezing is also going to be something that we find a lot with babies who are brand new because they are obligatory nose breathers, which means that they need to breathe out of their nose. And sometimes amniotic fluid and other irritants can be in their nose, so they'll clear those by sneezing. And baby sneezes are adorable. Kind of going back to that colostrum sitting in your baby's belly, you might notice right after your baby's born that they are very eager to nurse. They're pecking around like little birds on your chest trying to find the nipple. A lot of times babies will do a breast crawl and actually find their way over to the breast without you having to do much helping at all. You have one really great feeding right after they're born and then they're really sleepy and you can't wake them up for the next 24 hours and it's stressful. You really want to breastfeeding to work, you don't feel like it's working. Well, I have a little hint for you. It is. So I have my video all about breastfeeding, which I am going to link right here. But one thing I want you to know is in the first 24 hours, we really just want one good feeding. The rest of them are often attempts and that's okay. Some babies will feed good throughout the whole first 24 hours. Other babies are just exhausted. Being born is exhausting. And I think this is nature's way of letting you guys both get a little bit of sleep. Now babies have this amazing stuff on them called brown fat. That brown fat helps them maintain their body temperature and helps them get through until your milk comes in. Between day three and day five for most first time moms. It makes up about 10% of their birth weight. That is one reason why you might notice in the hospital that we weigh your babies daily. We are monitoring their weight loss to make sure that they don't lose more than 10% of their birth weight. If you had an epidural or if you had a cesarean birth and you perhaps got some IV fluid, those can falsely inflate your baby's first weight. So if we see a big weight loss in the first 24 hours, that is going to be less concerning to us because we're probably losing some water weight as compared to if we were to see a really big weight loss on day two or day three. But ideally your milk's going to come in and then baby will start eating and will be taking in more than they are excreting. Baby's first poops are big and intense and meconium and black and sticky and tarry. Totally, totally normal, totally nasty. And really when you think about it, a lot more than they're taking in, which could be teaspoons to a tablespoon at a time. Baby's bellies in the first 24 hours are about the size of a marble. They're not huge. So if they're filled up with amniotic fluid, they're not gonna wanna eat. And even if they're filled up with milk, still going to be pooping more than they're taking in. And really that's where that brown fat comes in. In that first hour, up until the first 48 hours of life, you might notice that your baby's hands and feet are purple. What the heck? What is going on? This is something called acrocyanosis, and it is totally normal in the first 48 hours or so of life. Babies, when they're first born, draw their first breath, and this inflates their lungs, and along with some other pressure changes, basically changes their whole cardiovascular system so that they're now using their heart and their lungs to oxygenate and pump the blood out to their body, as opposed to having blood and nutrients and oxygen supplied to them from the umbilical cord. So it's a really, really big change. And their bodies are really focusing on perfusing these core important organs, not so much on the hands and feet. And that's why most babies, when we talk about APGAR scores, often will have a point knocked off for color because their hands and feet are a little bit purple because it's almost impossible to be fully pink all over in the first one or five minutes of life. Something else that you might notice develop in the first few days of life on your beautiful babies is something called erythema toxicum. Sounds really scary, doesn't it? It's not. 
Not at all. It's just newborn rash. It's basically little bumps and lumps, often red. Sometimes they look like little mosquito bites, and it's just your baby's skin getting used to the outside world. It is in no way bothersome to your baby. It's probably more bothersome to you than it is to them, but it is a perfectly normal finding. And Nevi, also known as stork bites, which you'll often see on the eyelids or on the face, those disappear within the first year or so of life. Genitalia of brand new babies can be a little bit funny looking. Often they are a little bit swollen, either baby's scrotums can be swollen or their labias might be swollen, and you might also notice some little breast buds being a little bit more swollen. Sometimes those even can excrete milk, called witch's milk. With little girls you're going to notice some white discharge as they withdraw from mom's hormones. Sometimes they can even have like a little bit of vaginal bleeding, also known as pseudomenses. So let's talk about the umbilical stump. This is something that I think causes parents a lot of concern. They're nervous about it. What is this thing on their baby? This remnants of the umbilical cord kind of sticking out of where their belly button will be. It should dry up and fall off in about two weeks, about 10 to 14 days of life we see that happening. We definitely want to keep an eye on it, make sure that it's not looking pussy or having a really foul odor. They can rarely get infected. The good news is that they have no feeling, so you don't have to worry about bumping it and that bothering baby, but you do want to make sure when you put their diaper on that you roll and tuck the diaper so that the umbilical stump is not in the diaper so that it can get nice and dry and fall off. But really, it falls off. Honestly, probably the grossest part about having a baby. It's kind of like having a loose tooth, like it's it will be hanging on by a string. There might be a few little drops of blood as it's falling off as well. Sometimes in the hospital, you're gonna notice a little clamp on that umbilical stump, and that is to just wait until it clots off so that there won't be bleeding. That should come off before you leave the hospital though. Something that you might notice your brand new baby doing is shaking. You might think that this is caused by your baby being cold. Well, babies actually don't shiver. They don't shiver if they're cold. That's not something that they've really can tell or show us. They might tell us they're cold by crying, but shivering is not going to be a response that they do to help keep themselves warm. They've got that brown fat that should be there to keep them warm. But the jitters could be a normal part of normal newborn neurological immaturity. This jitteriness should go away within the first one to two months, and you really should just notice it more when they're upset and crying. Once you've soothed them, it should, it should pretty much stop itself as well. The jitters can be caused sometimes by a low blood sugar, so if there is any concern about your baby's blood sugar, that is definitely something that you want to bring up when your nurse is in the room, and we can always check a blood sugar just to be sure. So now I'm going to go over with you, this is kind of our last thing, the five S's. Now this is taken from the book Happiest Baby on the Block by Dr. Karp. There's also a video, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube, but this is how we soothe a fussy baby. Now this is my sweet little fussy baby. She's a little petite, but she's very angry. So you might notice that second night of life, that second day of life, while your baby is kind of waiting for your milk to come in and is now fully awake and having lots of thoughts and feeling about digesting for the first time, being out in the world, away from mama, that they are really fussy. You're gonna notice that they like to be skin to skin with you. They like to be close and snuggled up. That's all really, really normal. This is called the fourth trimester. Your baby has spent the last nine months being cozy and nestled up in your womb, hearing your heartbeat and hearing you talk and hearing your blood move. And now it's out in this world that is loud and scary and overwhelming for their sweet little nervous systems. So some ways that we can help remind them of being in the womb is by swaddling them. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a newborn to demonstrate how I should swaddle a baby, but I'm just gonna go ahead and swaddle this little one up. This is our first S, is swaddle. And so the reason why we swaddle is because it mimics that feeling of firm closeness that babies feel in the womb. Nurses are typically really good swaddlers, so I would recommend every nurse that comes in ask them for their swaddling tutorial because every nurse does it a little bit differently and then you can kind of practice and see what works for you. I also really like the halo swaddles that zip and then velcro. Those are great as well. So we've got our little burrito baby and now all swaddled up and this might be enough to help, but we're gonna go over the rest of the five S's. So the next one is suck. You either can give your baby the breast 
but more than likely sometimes this fussiness is like they don't want the breast they're just angry their belly's hurting a little bit maybe they're passing gas and they just are uncomfortable so giving them a clean finger to suck on or a pacifier if that's what you would like to do I'll just pretend like I'm gonna let her suck on my finger I'll stand up too and then putting them on their side or their stomach so we know that we don't want to leave babies sleeping in a crib on their stomach but holding a baby with your forearm on their abdomen, supporting their head like so, gives their gassy tummies something to press up against, which feels really good. And then you can still have them sucking on your finger. And then the next one we're gonna do is shushing. So if baby's still crying at this point and still upset, you're gonna shush at the volume that they are crying and then slowly bring it down. So you're gonna start off pretty loud. You're gonna start off shh, and then bring it down until you're cut. If they're quiet, you can shh. And then what are we doing here? We're kind of swaying. And you'll find that there is a natural movement and rhythm that you have when you're holding a baby. And then hopefully, once you get baby settled, you're able to kind of slowly back off on some of these things, right? I mean, the swaying kind of feels good, but you maybe hopefully won't have to be shushing so loud. Maybe you can sit down and just sway with babe. But those are the five S's. So swaddle, suck, side or stomach, shush, and sweat. If you, the birthing person, perhaps want to get a nap, the five S's is something that somebody who is not breastfeeding, who is not the mother can do. So this is a great thing for dad to do, or if you have somebody helping you with your baby, five S's is fabulous. Obviously, we do not want to use these in place of a feeding, but these are ways sometimes if you have a baby who's very, very angry, you can calm them down enough so that they will latch and do a feeding. Because Every baby has a little bit of a different temperament, and you might have a baby who goes from zero to 60 very, very fast and gets very angry very fast. And some babies will latch when they're super, super angry, and some babies won't. And it's all about figuring out and learning your baby. Now, the very last thing that I want you to know about your newborn is that it's twofold. One, it is super normal when your baby comes out and it's first placed upon your chest that you are filled with overwhelming love for that brand new baby that just grows more and more every day. It's also normal if you don't feel that right away. Sometimes that's a love that has to grow and develop. And even though you've known this person on the inside, you're meeting them now on the outside. And it's okay if it takes you a little while to figure out this whole motherhood thing and figure out how to be in love with your new baby. Maybe you love them the whole time and that's fine too, but both are normal. And I never want anybody to feel bad if the baby comes out and they're just kind of like, oh, okay, this is a lot because it is a lot. It's beautiful and messy and overwhelming and joyful and hard. Being a new mom, being a new parent is all of those things. But hopefully these tips help you a little bit in the hospital. And I just want you to know that once you go home, you've got this too. And reach out to your support in your community. And if you ever have any concerns, do not hesitate to call your pediatrician. Thanks so much. Bye guys.